Good evening. Good evening. My name is Carla Snowden. And my name is Pete Shively. Welcome to the Notre Dame Academy. And coming to Catholic High School. Joint production of Rogers and Hammerstein's The, the Sound, Sound of Music. Music. This is the 10th annual spring play that NDA and CCH have collaborated to produce and perform here in Notre Dame's auditorium. It is with a great deal of pride that we have undertaken The Sound of Music, one of the most popularly acclaimed musicals ever performed on Broadway. This is a story about family, an evil mother, and a man and woman who find love when they are least expecting it. It is also the story of faith, family, and patriotism, and their power to shape the love of two unlikely lovers. As Marie and the captain discover their heart's desire, they also find a joy and peace that even war cannot destroy. The Mother Abbess and the nuns of Namburg Abbey provide the play with a spiritual dimension that makes us a true tour de force. Watch now as we offer our interpretation of a story about life and love that is as touching and funny and memorable as it is wise. We hope you find it as endearing as we have in rehearsing and performing it. Thank, Thank you, you and, and enjoy. enjoy. Maria?
should be pleased with our efforts. Out of 28 postulants, 16 or 17 of them are ready to enter the novitiate. Now let's consider the doubtful ones again. There's Ermagard. Reverend Mother, there's no doubt about Ermagard. The religious life is no place for the pious. You mean not pretentiously pious, Sister Berta? There's Christina and there's Maria. Well, after last night, I don't think there can be any doubt in the Reverend Mother's mind about Maria. She's the least likely of all the candidates. I gave her permission to leave the Abbey for the day, Sister Berta. I told you, Sister Berta. Ave. Reverend Mother, I've searched everywhere for Maria, in all the likely places. Well, considering it's your Maria you're looking for, why don't you try looking in the unlikely places? Yes, Mother. Sister Sophia. The mistress of the postulants and the mistress of the novices were trying to help me out by expressing opposite points of view. How do you feel about Maria? Oh, I love her very dearly, but she always seems to be getting in trouble, doesn't she? Exactly what I say. She climbs a tree and scrapes her knee. The dress has got its hair. She waltzes on her way to rice and whistles on the stair. And underneath her window she has colors in her hair. I breathe in her singing in the evening. She's a 
always late for chapel, her penitence is great. She's always late for everything except for everything. I hate to have to say it, but I very firmly feel Maria's not an answer to the appeal. I'd like to say a word on her behalf. And say it's to Margarita. Maria makes me <laughs> laugh. How do you solve the problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? How do you find a word that means Maria? A cloud. Many a thing you know you'd like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand. But how do you make her stay? I listen to all you say. How do you keep a wave upon the sand? Oh, how do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you hold a million in your hand? When I'm with her, I'm confused, out of focus and bemused, and I never know exactly where I am. Unpredictable as well as she is. She's a darling, she's a demon, she's a lamb. She'll have pets or any pets, drive a warning from his back. She's a throw over the dervish and well. She is gentle, she is wise, a little, she's a child. She's a hiding, she's an angel, she's a girl. How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a clown and pin it down? How do you find a word that means Maria? A flippity jimmy Many a thing you know you'd like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand. But how do you make her stay? And listen to all you say. How do you keep a wave upon the sand? Oh, how do you solve a problem like Maria? Now, my children, I think I should talk to Maria alone. I am grateful to you all. Yeah. Come here, my child. Sit down, Maria. I'm so sorry, Reverend Mother. Please let me explain. I just couldn't help myself. I didn't intend to ask for an apology, Maria. But please let me ask of your forgiveness. The sky was so beautiful and so blue, and the grass was so green, and the earth was so fragrant. I just had to be a part of it. And the mountain kept leading me up higher and higher. Maria, what if you were to become lost on that mountain? But I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that led me to you. Oh? When I was a child, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work, singing on their way to Vespers. Well, many a times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way. And that brings up another transgression. I was singing yesterday, and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it's only here in the Abbey that there is a rule about postulant singing. But that's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta is always reminding me, but after it's too late, after I've already started singing, and I'm always saying things, everything I think and everything I feel. Maria, some people would call that honesty. But Mother, it's terrible. You know how Sister Berta makes us kiss the floor after we've broken a rule? Well, lately I've taken to kissing the floor every time I see her just to save time. <laughs> Maria, when I came to the window the other day, you saw me and you stopped singing. Yes, and it's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind too. I wish you hadn't stopped. 
I used to sing that song when I was a child, and I can't quite remember. Please. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream-colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodle, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things and then I don't feel so bad. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper candles and warm wool and mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things and then I don't feel so bad. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things and then I don't feel so We were both singing at the top of our voices. You're right. It's that kind of song. And singing it always makes me feel better. Mother, where did you learn that song? I was brought up in the mountains myself when I was a child. Maria, in spite of what you saw over the abbey wall, you weren't prepared for the way we live, were you? No. But I pray, and I do try, Tell me, Maria, what is the most important lesson you've learned here? To find out what is the will of God and to do it. Even if it is hard to accept? Oh, even then. Maria, the dress you wore when you came to us, is that still in the robing room? Well, why no, Mother? I'm sure it's been given to the poor. Sister Margaretta says that when we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes. Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? Oh, no, Mother, please, no. For a while only, Maria. But this is what I want. This is my life. But perhaps if you go out into the world again for a time, you'll come back to us knowing what we expect and that we do expect it. But I know what you expect, and I'll do it. I promise. Maria. If it is God's will. But mother, where am I to go? There is a family. A family of seven children. Seven? You like children. Oh, well, yes, but You're very seven. good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Von Trapp expects you this afternoon. He is a fine man and a brave one. He was given the Maria Theresa medal for his heroism. It was for his heroism in the Adriatic. A captain in the Navy? 
Oh, Mother, he'll be very strict. You're not being sent to his battleship, Maria. I 
I am for certain everything will turn out fine. I have confidence the world can all be mine. No have to agree, I have confidence in me. I have confidence in sunshine. I have confidence in rain. I have confidence the spring will come again. These lights which you see, I have confidence in me. Strength doesn't lie in numbers. Strength doesn't lie in wealth. Strength lies in nights of peaceful slumber. When you wake up, wake up, it's healthy. All I trust, I leave my heart to. All I trust becomes my own. I have confidence in confidence alone. Oh, help. I have confidence in confidence alone. Besides which you say, I have confidence. Yes, sir? I was calling the housekeeper and she didn't answer. Do you know why? Sometimes she doesn't hear, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I was answering the telephone. Good day, sir. We're happy to have you home again. Why did the last governess leave? Who knows? She just said, I've had enough of this and walked out. Yes. But why? Was Louisa playing tricks again? Putting toads in her bed? She didn't complain of that, sir. Well, it's no matter. There's another one coming today. And this one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Nonberg Abbey, with orders to stay until September. I hope you'll be at home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call. Was it for me? No, sir, it was for Franz. But before you arrived, there was a call for you from Vienna. A Frau Schrader. I have the number in the pantry. I know the number. Oh, I shall be back in about a month with some guests. Yes, sir. Do you know how many, sir? Just two. Herr Detweiler. Ah, Herr Detweiler. And Frau Schrader. Who wanted me on the telephone? It was the post office. They have a telegram for you. It will be delivered at, at, at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? That gives me five hours to be nervous. It's that scatterbrained boy delivering the telegrams. Well, that's one thing people are saying. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have efficiency. Don't let the captain hear you say that. <sighs> He never whistled for us when his wife was alive. He's being the captain of a ship again. But I can't bear being whistled for. It's humiliating. 
In the Imperial Navy, the bosun's always whistled for us. But I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. Too bad. You could have made a fortune. You may wait here. Captain Von Trapp. You are Fräulein... Maria. Maria Rainier. Why do you stare at me? Well, sir, you don't look at all like a sea captain. And you, Fräulein, do not look very much like a governess. Take off your hat. Turn around. Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. But I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. This is what you would call a worldly dress? It belonged to our last postulant. I would have made myself a dress, but I wasn't given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material. Today, if possible. Now, you'll be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You are to see how far they progress in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning is to be spent in the classroom. In the afternoon, they march. You are to see that at all times they conduct themselves with decorum and orderliness. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir. This is your new governess, Fräulein Maria. When I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fräulein, will listen and learn the signals so that you can call them when you want them. Lisa. Friedrich. Luisa. Rita. Marta. Now, Fräulein, let's see how well you listen. Oh, I won't have to whistle for them, Reverend Captain. What I mean is, I'll be with them all the time. Not on all occasions. This is a large house and a large estate. They've been taught to come only when they hear their signal. Now, when I want you, this is what you will hear. Oh, oh, Captain, please. I couldn't answer to a whistle. Whistles are for cats and dogs, not people. That's nonsense. Everyone in this house answers to a whistle. Here, I'll show you. Yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler, Franz Fräulein well, Maria. Yes, sir. This is the executive officer, Frau Schmidt. The housekeeper. Fräulein Maria, would you please be sure her room is ready? Yes, sir. 
Well, I will now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know your signal. You will call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return this whistle to you, Captain. I won't be needing it, Captain. At ease. <laughs> Children, now that there's just us, would you mind telling me your names again and tell me how old you are? Now you're. I'm legal. I'm 16 years old, and I don't need a governor. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 15. I'm impossible. <laughs> really? You seem full of possibilities to me. I'm Begita. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa, and she's 13 years old. And you're smart. I'm 10, and I think your dress is the ugliest one I ever saw. Brigitte, you mustn't say a thing like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? If I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt. I'm eight. Almost. I'm incorrigible. <laughs> What's incorrigible? <laughs> well, I think it means that you want to be treated like a boy. I'm Marta, and I'm going to be nine on Tuesday, and I want a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color, too. <laughs> and your Gretel? I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. How do I start? You mean you don't know anything about being a governess? No! Well, the first thing you have to do is to tell Father to mind his own business. Louisa, don't! I like her. What's in here? My guitar. What did you bring this for? For when we all sing together. We don't sing. You don't? No. Well, well children, what songs do you know? We don't know any song. You don't know any? No. Well, let's see. Oh, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. Oh, come, children. I'll make it easier for you. Listen. Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a name I call myself, fa a long, long way to run. So a needle pulling thread, la a note to follow. So tea a drink with jam and bread. That will bring us back to do oh 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 do a deer a female deer do. a drop of golden sun be a name I call myself do. a long long way to run so I need a pulling thread long I know to follow so. I drink with jam and bread That will bring us back to Do a deer, a female deer Red, a drop of golden sun Me, a name I call myself Ma, a long, long way to run So I need a pulling thread La, a note to follow so Tea, I drink with jam and bread Do, 
re, mi, fa, so, and so on are only the tools we use to build the song. Once we have these notes in our heads, we can sing a million different tunes. How? By mixing them up. Listen. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. Now you do it. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. So, do, la, ti, do, re, do. So, do, la, ti, do, re, do. Well, good. Now let's put it all together. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. So, do, la, ti, do, re, do. But it doesn't mean anything. So, we put in words. One word for every note, like this. When you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. You said one word for every note? Oh, yes, Brigitte, I did. But when you say anything, you're using up three notes on one word. Well, sometimes we do that. Now, children, all together. And when you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. Do, re, mi, do, re, Good night. Rolf. Liesel. Yes? You don't have to say good night this early, just because your father's home. How did you know my father was home? Oh, 
I have a way of knowing things. You are wonderful. <laughs> no, I'm not. Really. Oh, yes, you are. I mean, how did you know two days ago that you would be here at just this night time tonight with a telegram for Franz? Well, every year on this date, he always gets a birthday telegram from his sister. You see? You are wonderful. Can I come again tomorrow night? Rolf, you can't be sure you're going to have a telegram to deliver here tomorrow night. Well, I could come here by mistake. With a telegram from Colonel Schneider. He's here from Berlin. He's staying with the gal after, but I... No one's supposed to know he's here, so don't tell your father. Why not? Well, your father is pretty Austrian. We're all pretty Austrian. Well, some people think he ought to be German. They're getting pretty mad at those who don't think so. They're getting ready to... Well, let's just hope your father doesn't get into any trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. <laughs> I don't worry about him. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you, Lisa? Sixteen. What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage For fate to turn the light on Your life, little girl, is an empty page That men will want to write on to write on You are 16 Going on 17 Baby, it's time to think Better beware Be canny and careful Baby, you're on the brink You are 16 Going on 17 Fellows will fall in line Eager young lads and brewers and cads will offer you food and wine. Totally unprepared are you to face a world of men. Timid and shy and scared are you of things beyond your ken. You need someone older and wiser telling you what to do. I am 17, going on 18, I'll take care of you.
Fräulein Maria! Fräulein Maria, it's Frau Schmidt. I'm getting ready for bed. The captain is going to Vienna tomorrow. I have this material he ordered for a new dress for you. Oh, how nice of him. Even before it's made, this is the prettiest dress I've ever had. I hope the captain will like it, because I want to ask him for more material. More? Not for me, for the children, for play clothes. The Von Trapp children don't play. The captain doesn't want them to get dirty. But they're children. They have to climb trees, roll around on the grass. Well, think of all the rocks and caves. The captain says the best exercise is marching. The Von Trapp children do not play. They march. <laughs> I hope you find your room comfortable. Yes, thank you. There will be new curtains for the window. They will be hung tomorrow. But these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. Will the captain be away long? I don't know. Of course, he has to come home every time he hires a new governess. I sometimes think that the children get rid of their governesses just because they want to see their father. But he must want to see them too. Since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. <laughs> you can put that away too. You won't be using it. Why not? The captain won't have music here. He won't have music? And he used to love music. Oh, there were wonderful evenings here. His wife would sing and he would play violin or guitar. But now he shut all of that out of his life. But not to have music. That's wrong for him. And it's wrong for the children, too. It will work out. If you ask me, the captain is thinking very seriously of marrying again before the summer is over. How wonderful. Well, if they'd have a mother again. Yes. Well, it's going to rain. You better close your window. Good night, Fräulein. Good night, Frau Schmidt. Dear God, I know now that you have sent me here on a mission. I must help these children to love their new mother and prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. And I pray that they become a happy family in thy sight. God bless the captain, God bless Liesel, and Friedrich, Luisa, Brigitta, Marta, and little Gretel. And oh yes, uh, who's the other boy? What's his name? Well. God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother, Sister Margareta, and everybody at Nonberg Abbey. And now, dear God, about Liesel. Help her to know that I am her friend, and help her to tell me what she's up to. Are you going to tell on me? Shh. Help me to be understanding, so that I may guide her footsteps. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was out taking a walk, and somebody locked the doors earlier than usual. And I didn't want to wake everybody up, so when I saw your window open... You're not going to tell Father, are you? Liesel, did you climb that trellis to get up here? That's how we always got into this room to play tricks on the governess. Louisa can climb it with a toad in her hand. Toads? Oh, Liesel, were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we wash this outfit out tonight, no one would notice it tomorrow. Then all this will just be between you and me. Well, here, put this on. Take your wet clothes in there, and then soak them, put them to soak in the bathtub. <laughs> then come back here and sit on the edge of my bed, and we'll have a little talk. I told you earlier today that I didn't need a governess? Well, maybe I do. Oh, it's you, Gretel. Are you afraid? 
Why you just stay right here with me? Where are the others? They're asleep. They're not scared. You girls weren't scared too, were you? Well, I'll leave you up on the bed. Really? Oh, yes. Now all we have to do is wait for the boys. We won't see them. Boys are brave. You boys weren't frightened also, were you? Oh, no. We just wanted to make sure you weren't. Well, that was very thoughtful of you. Was this your idea, Friedrich? Um, no, no it, it was Kurt. Oh, Kurt. That's the one I left out. God bless Kurt. Why does it do that? Well, the lightning says something to the thunder, and the thunder answers it back. I wish it wouldn't answer so loud. Why does it have to get so angry? It makes me want to cry. Maybe if we all sing loud enough, we won't hear the thunder. Come on, children, off the bed. Was an old eagle turn lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh. Loud was the voice of an old eagle turn lady, oh lady, oh lady. Folks in the town that was quite remote heard lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh. Loud staying clear from the goat herds the road heard lady, oh lady, oh lady. Oh, oh, lady, oh lady, oh, 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 lady, oh lady. Oh, oh, lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady. A prince on the bridge of a castle boat heard lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh Man on a road with a load to tow, turn lady, oh lady, oh loo Man in the midst of a table do turn lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh Man drinking beer with the foam of a load, turn lady, oh lady, oh loo Oh, oh, lady, oh lady, oh, 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 lady, oh lady, oh, 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 lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady one little girl in a pale pink coat, her lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh. She yodeled back to the lonely goat, her lady, oh lady, oh loo. Soon heard the law with a gleaming loot, her lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh. What I'll do at for a girl and me, her lady, oh lady, oh loo. Oh, oh, lady, oh lady, oh, 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 lady, oh lady, oh, oh, lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady, oh lady. Happy a day, lady oh, lady oh, lady oh, lady oh, lady oh. Soon the duet will become a tree oh, lady 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 one little girl in a pale pink coat heard Lay, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh, She yodeled back to the lonely goat heard Lady, oh, lady, oh, lady, Soon her mama with a gleaming loot heard Lady, oh, lady, oh, lay, oh, What a duet for a girl and goat heard Lady, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh, ta 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 Lady, oh, lay, ta 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 Lady, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh, lay Happy a day, lady, oh, lady, lady, oh, oh, lady, oh, oh, lady, we fall. Soon the duet will become a tree, oh, lady, 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 oh, lady.
Franz, did you tell Herr Detweiler we're having coffee out here? Yes, sir. Herr Detweiler's still on the telephone. Frau Schrader. Oh, yes, thank you. Ursula, is there any sign of my children yet? Not yet, Captain. Gail, those mountains, they're magnificent. Yes. They're not like any other mountains. They're friendly. Look, do you see that green stretch of woods over there? When the wind moves through it, it's like a restless sea. <laughs> and that sweet little village. That's not a village. That's a town. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. Well, you're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him. And when I do, he's exciting. Oh, exciting. <laughs> well, I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like those mountains. Only you keep moving. How can you stand to be away from this place as much as you are? Well, perhaps I'm searching for a reason, a reason to come back here to stay. <laughs> Georg, I like it here very much. Max, <clears throat> Max can't be my telephone. I know he's desperate about getting singers for the Kaltzberg Festival, but... You like it here? We'd have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation now. It is, and I'm president. You, president of a corporation. After all, I managed Heinrich's estate for years before he died. I can't see you sitting behind a desk. Well, of course. And I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Herr Detweiler would like his coffee now. While he's telephoning? He just finished. I'm sorry, I took so long. Any luck? How would you like this for the Kaltzberg Festival? The finest coral group in Austria. The greatest mixed quartet in all Europe, and the best soprano in the world! Max, that's something I'd love to hear. Oh, so would I. <laughs> all I've got now is a basso who isn't even profundo. Max, you always come up with a good festival concert? And why? Because my motto is, never start looking for the people you wind up getting. That's why I've been telephoning Paris, London, Rome, Stockholm... On Georg's telephone? <laughs> How else could I afford it? Why else am I up here? <laughs> well, I'd hoped it because you liked me. Oh, well, of course I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine cellar. Max! I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. <laughs> Speaking as a government official, I... Georg, is there a cathedral around here? That's our abbey. Nomburg Abbey. And do they have a choir? Hmm. A beautiful one. Good. In the next few days, I shall have to visit all the little towns around here and listen to the choirs, quartets, songabunds... You'll and... be here in time for dinner, won't you? Oh, yes. You know... It was in a town just about that size, Waltzman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous, toured all over the world. Oh, yes. Whatever became of them? Well, by the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. Hmm. Who lives in that dilapidated old castle down there? Rumpled Stiltskin? No. That's Baron Elberfeld. The oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. Georg, I'd like to meet all your friends. While I'm here, why don't you throw a dinner for me? Nothing very much. 
Just something lavish. Well, I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today, it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. Georg, now's not the time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. Well, I can't imagine what's happened to the children. We are not worried about them, are you? They should have been here to greet you. <laughs> well, I'm sure it wasn't an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. <laughs> Forgive me. I'll try to find them. Elsa. Have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? Oh, yes. Well, he hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is? No. I do. What? It's really very simple. It's money. <laughs> money? Yes. He's rich, and you're rich. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms away upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. Their famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, you very seldom hear of. Not a sign of them anywhere. No little shack do you share with me We do not flee from a mortgagee Nary a care in the world that we How can love survive? You're fond of bonds and you own a lot I have a plane and a diesel yacht Plenty of nothing you haven't got How can love survive? No rides for us on the top of a bus In the face of the freezing breezes You reach your goals in your comfy old rolls Or in one of your mercedes -es. Far, very far off the beam are we Quaint and bizarre as a team are we Two millionaires with a dream are we We're keeping romance alive Two millionaires with a dream are we We'll make our love survive No little cold water flat have we Warmed by the glow of insolvency Up to your necks in security How can love survive? How can I show what I feel for you? I cannot go out and steal for you I cannot die like a meal for you How can love survive? You millionaires with financial affairs Are too busy for simple pleasure When you are poor it is toujours le more For the more all the poor have pleasure Caught in our gold-plated chains are we Lost in our wealthy domains are we Trapped by our capital gains are we We're keeping romance alive Trapped by your capital gains, are you? We'll make your love so <laughs> What do you want? Oh, Captain, I didn't see. I mean, I didn't know. Hiya. Who are you? I have a telegram for Herr Detweiler. I am Herr Detweiler. Well, you delivered your telegram. Now get out. Georg, he's just a boy. I am an Austrian. I will not be Heil. Georg, what's going to happen is going to happen. Just make sure it doesn't happen to you. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go out on the terrace for a little while. Max, 
it's a good thing you haven't any character. Otherwise, I'm convinced I'd hate you. Gayon, you couldn't hate me. I'm too lovable. Eric Deathweiler, there's a call for you. It's fine. I'll take it. Thank you, Paul. cleaned up. Get into your uniforms and report back here. At once! Fräulein, where do they get these abominations? Out of a nightmare? No, out of some curtains. The curtains that used to hang in my bedroom. There was plenty of wear left in them. Just a moment. Do you mean to tell me that the people of this neighborhood have seen my children wearing old curtains? Well, yes. They've become quite popular. Everyone smiles at them. I don't wonder. They say, there go Captain Von Trapp's children. My children have always been a credit to my name. But Captain, they weren't. They were just unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear from you about my children. I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. Lisa wasn't a child anymore, and if you keep treating her as one, Captain, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich is afraid to be himself. He's shy. He's aloof. He needs you. He needs your confidence. Don't tell me about my son. Well, Brigitte could tell you about him. She could tell you a lot more if you got to know her, because she notices things. And she always tells the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. That will do. And Kurt is sensitive. He's easily hurt, and you Stop. ignore him. You Can push I? him aside the way you do all of them. And Louisa just wants to have a good time. You've got to let her have a good time. And Marta, I don't know about yet, but someone has to find out about her. And little Gretel just wants to be loved. Oh, please, Captain, love Gretel. Love all of them. They need you. I'm not finished yet. Oh, yes, you are, Captain. <laughs> Fräulein. You will pack your things this minute and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. Captain, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said those things, not in the way I said them. Once you've gone, there'll be more... What is that? Singing. Yes, I know it's singing. Who's singing? Your children. My children? Singing? I wanted them to sing for Frau Schrader when they met her. Gail, you must hear. My heart was to sing. wants to beat like a wing from the birds that rise from the bay to the trees. My heart wants to sigh like a child that flies from a church on a breeze. I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will hear. Oh, 
Why haven't you told me how enchanting your children are? Children, I'd like to have you, have you show Carl Schrader the gardens. Yes. Yeah. Show me the gardens. I want to see everything, and with you, too. I don't know any of your names yet, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure I won't get them straight for a long time. My name is Marta, and if not, I'm Marta. She's Louisa. You were right. I don't know my own children. But they're waiting to know you. They want so much to, after I've gone. No. No, I want you to stay. I ask you to stay. If I can be of any help. You already have. You brought music back into my home. I'd forgotten. I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will be what I could be for. My heart will be blessed with the sound of music. children. Oh, you're staying on? Until September. September. Then I go back to the Abbey. The Abbey? I'm going to be a nun. Oh, <laughs> how nice. <laughs> when you get back to the Abbey, think of us. I'll pray for you. <laughs> Can't we dance while all the guests are dancing? 
Of course. Remember what Fräulein Maria told us? Nobody. Pleasant on the terrace. Baroness Elberfeld. Frau Zeller. Elberfeld. Yeah. It's good to have you in the Baroness here again. Thank you. Frau Schrader is charming, Georg. I hope she is new. Yeah. Oh no, just a headache. <laughs> I'm up to get her now. We'll find you on the terrace. Father? It doesn't look like these people are having a very good time. Well, half the people I invited aren't speaking to the other half. Well, Father, maybe they're having a good time not speaking to each other. So, Frau Schrader asked me to let you know that she will join you in a few minutes. Oh, thank you. You might like to see whether she would like this glass of brandy. What's that dance? It's the Leveller, Kurt. An Austrian folk dance. Show me. Oh, Kurt, I haven't danced the Leveller since I was a little girl. Oh, Lord, Maria, you remember it. Really, Kurt, I haven't danced since. Kurt, you said left hand behind the back? Yes, that's right. But first, the boy and girl meet. Yes. Then they go for a little stroll. Allow me. I'm not very used to dancing. Well, hello there. Good evening, Frau Schrader. I hope you're feeling better, Frau Schrader. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> hello, Uncle Max. We're having a party. Good. Tell your father it's sure to be a success. I'm here. Max. Elsa. 
Without a doubt, you are the most beautiful corporation president in the entire world. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Max, you're back. And as usual, just in time for dinner. Gail, did you think you could have a Galen without me? Oh, dear. Now we have an odd man. Well, a little odd, but charming. <laughs> Children, would you not tell Frau Schmidt to set two more places for dinner? And I'd like to see Fräulein Maria. Two places? Yes. We need another woman. Who, Liesl? Oh, no, no. She's much too young. No, I'll ask Maria. You're not serious. But of course. But she's a nursemaid. I don't think of her like that. Well, I don't mind, Georg, but, but your friends, you can't ask them to dine with Maria. Why not? Elsa, tell him why not. Max, can you get changed in a hurry? Yes, Max. We could use you tonight. Frau Schrader? They're talking about you out there. Come on, Georg. I've been dodging these people for an hour. It's kind of chilly, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Thought it was rather warm. Brigitte, have you seen your father? Good evening, Fräulein Maria. Good evening, Herr Deadweiler. It's nice to see you again. Yes, you're going to. I knew it all along. Frau Schrader didn't have a headache. She just wanted to get out of the party. She was faking. Brigitte, you shouldn't say things that you don't know are true. But I do know. I heard her say to father that she'd been dodging these people. That doesn't mean that you didn't have a headache. It's very important that your children like Frau Schrader. I like her all right. Why is it important? I think she's going to become your new mother. Oh, Fräulein, father's never going to marry her. Why, he couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because he's in love with you. Oh, Brigitte, that's just the cause. You must know that. No, Brigitte, no. Remember the other night when we were all sitting on the floor singing the Edelweiss song he taught us? After we finished, you laughed at him for forgetting the words. He didn't forget the words. He stopped singing to look at you. And when he speaks to you, the way his voice sounds? No, Brigitte. And the way you looked at him just now when you were dancing. You're in love with him. One more dance, Gretel, and then to bed. Ah, Maria, you're not going to have dinner with the children tonight. You're going to have it down here with us. No. Oh, yes. Yes, it's all arranged. You have to hurry. You have to change. Oh. And Maria, wear that dress you wore the other night we were all singing. It was lovely. Soft and, and blue. Oh, no. Not yet. The children will want to say goodnight. Gay. I wanted the children to say goodnight. The way they did for me last night. No, Elsa, not here. Oh, Georg. The way they did it for me, it was so sweet. No, Elsa, not in front of strangers. Georg, please. For me. Presto changer. <laughs> Max, you're just in time. Children, now.
they could do at the festival. Fraulein Maria taught them to do it. I look all over Austria for something like this for the Kaltzburg Festival, and I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. A singing group of seven children in one family. Max, Georg didn't even want the children to sing in front of the guests tonight. I had to persuade him to do it. Ah, then you have influence. You must talk to him. Max? Elsa, this is important to Austria. And it wouldn't do me any harm either. Georg, you must be very proud of your children. I am. Thank you, Baroness. There isn't a more beautiful sign of what is good in our country than the innocent voices of our children. Come, come, Baron. You wouldn't have us believe that Austria alone holds a monopoly on virtue. Herr Zeller, some of us prefer the sound of Austrian voices raised in song to ugly German threats. Some Austrians bury their heads in the sand, and some in the flag. Perhaps those who warn you that the Anschluss is coming, and it is coming, would get further with you by putting their words to music. If the Nazis do take over Austria, Herr Zeller, I'm sure that you would be the entire trumpet section. You flatter me, Captain. Oh, how clumsy of me. I meant to insult you. Sophia, take our new postulant to the rubbing room. Bless you, my daughter. Reverend Mother, Maria has asked to see you. I know it has taken a long time. I waited until she wanted to come to me. It's strange. She seems happy to be here, but she's unhappy too. 
Why did they send her back? Do you know? She doesn't speak. She hasn't spoken except in prayer. I shall see her. Maria. This has been a trying experience for you. You've been unhappy. I'm sorry. It was, Reverend Mother. Has it taught you anything? I know that I never want to leave these walls again. Maria, what happened? Why did they send you back? They didn't send me back. I left. I left without telling them I was going. Without saying goodbye. Sit down, Maria. Maria, what happened? Why did you do this? I was frightened. Frightened? I was confused. I felt... I never felt that way before. I couldn't stay. And I knew that here I would be away from it. That here I would be safe. Maria, our abbey is not to be used as an escape. What is it you can't face? I can't face him again. Thank you, Sister Margarella. <laughs> Maria, are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Brigida said that I was, and that her father was in love with me. And then there he was, and we were looking at each other, and I could hardly breathe. Then I knew I couldn't stay. But do you like him, Maria? Oh, yes. Well, did you let him see how you felt? If I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. To have asked for the captain's love would have been wrong of me. I don't know, Mother. But what I do know is this. I am ready at this very moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. <laughs> Maria, the love of a man and a woman is holy too. The first time we talked together, you told me you remembered your father and mother before they died. Do you remember? Were they happy? Well, yes, Mother. Well, they were very happy. Maria, you were born of their happiness and of their love. And my child, you have a great capacity to love. But what you must find out is, how does God want you to spend your love? I've pledged my life to God's service. I've pledged my life to God. Maria, because you love this man, it doesn't mean you love God less. You must find out. You must go back. Oh, no, Mother. Please, no. Please don't ask me to do that. Let me stay here. These walls were not made to shut out problems. You have to face them. You have to find the life you were born to live. How do I find it? Look for it. Climb every mountain, search high and low, follow every byway, every path you know. Climb every mountain for.
little girl in a pale pink coat her. Leo, Leo, Lou. Soon come along with a gleaming glitter. Leo, Leo, Lehi, who? What a duet for a girl and good her. Leo, Leo, Lou. Ho, ho, Leo, Lee, ho, 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 Leo, Lee. Oh, holy, 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 holy. Enough, enough. <laughs> now let's sing seriously. Liesel, give us a key. Feel better? 
No explanation whatsoever. It was very wrong of me. Forgive me. Yes. But why did you do this to us? Please don't ask me that. Anyway, the reason no longer exists. Then you're back to stay? Only until arrangements can be made for another governess. Oh, no. No. The children missed you too much. I missed you. Everybody missed you very much while you were away. Nothing was the same. But you're going to marry well, Frau Schrader. Well, we can talk about it later. You go to the children now. Maria. A new dress? We have a new postulant. <laughs> I know I'm right, Max. We'll find him and ask him. I'll take your word for it, Elsa. Gail, settle this for Max and me, will you? Just how far down the mountain does your property go? Can you make out that stone wall? That's the property line. You see? I didn't argue about it. I know, and that makes me furious. I don't like to win without a fight. <laughs> Mayor Getweiler, while you were gone, you had a long distance call from Berlin. <laughs> Who could be calling me from Berlin? They said you'd know who it was. Yes, thank you, Franz. Gail, what were we just talking about? Max, this isn't the first call you've had from Berlin. Georg, you know I have no political convictions. Can I help it if other people have? Let's not stir that up again. Well, the Germans have promised not to invade Austria. Max knows that. Then why does he accept those calls from Berlin? Because if they don't keep their promise, I want to have some friends among them. Naturally. Oh, you agree too? Georg, this is the way I look at it. There was a man who was dying. They were giving him the last rites. They asked him, do you renounce the devil and all his works? And he said, at this moment, I prefer not to make any enemies. <laughs> Georg, if they should invade us, would you defy them? Yes. Do you realize what might happen to you? To your property? To your children? To everyone close to you. To Elsa. To me. Well, what will you do if they come? What anyone with any sense would do. Just sit tight and wait for it all to blow over. And you think it will? 
One thing is certain. Nothing you can do will make any difference. Don't look so serious, darling. Take the world off your shoulders. Relax. Even idealists can learn to be realists with a little effort. I may be an idealist. But I think that it's realistic to believe that you can't save yourself by giving up. And that you can't outwit a lion by putting your head... Mayor Jetweiler. You're called from Berlin, sir. I'll call them back from. In the lion's mouth. You might as well talk to them now, Max. Oh, yes. Go, go, go. Georg, I feel I know what's going to happen here. Can't you see things my way? No. <coughs> Not if you can see things their way. There's one thing you do better here than we do in Vienna. Your sunsets. I'm going to miss them. Elsa. Georg, don't. It's no use. Captain? Oh, I beg your pardon. Maria! Georg, you didn't tell me Maria was back? I'm delighted. <laughs> Captain, the children were wondering if they could take a holiday from their lessons tomorrow so that we can go on a picnic. Yes. Yes, I, I, I don't mind. Thank you. That will make them very happy. And may I be permitted to wish you happiness too, Frau Schrader, Captain? The children have told me that you're going to be married. Oh? Well, I'm afraid the children were wrong. Georg, I have to finish packing if I'm to get back to Vienna. If you feel you must. Uh, I'll tell Franz to have the car ready. Elsa. I'm sorry. Peter saying, Gail. Goodbye, Maria. I'm sorry if I said something I shouldn't have said. Well, you did say the wrong thing. But you said it at the right time. The children told me that you were going to marry the Baroness. There isn't going to be any Baroness. It wasn't right from the beginning. I realize that now. I'm sorry. Yes. You are? Yes. You called of your engagement? Yes. You see, you can't marry someone when you're in love with someone else. I look at you now and I realize that this is not something that has just happened. It's something I've known deep inside me for many weeks. You knew it too. What was it that told you? Brigitta. She said that night when we were dancing. She was quite right. That was no ordinary dance 
was it? I hadn't danced the Lendler since I was a little girl. It's quite different after you've grown up, isn't it? When you were a little girl, did little boy ever kiss you? Uh huh. That's quite different too. Is it? It is different. The Reverend Mother always says that when God closes a door, somewhere He opens a window. What else does the Reverend Mother say? That you have to look for your life. Have you found it? I think I have. I know I have. I love you. You know, those two ought to get together sometime. Who? The Reverend Mother and Brigida. For here you are standing there loving me, whether or not you should. So somewhere in my youth or childhood, I must have done so. Nothing comes from nothing, nothing ever could. So somewhere in my youth or childhood, I must have done something. Something good. Is there someone I should go to to ask permission to marry you? Why don't we ask the, the children?
Reverend Mother, have I your permission to look at myself? I brought a mirror. It's in my suitcase. Sister Bertha! <laughs> Sister Margarita! Uh, I don't think she's had time to put in the linings. <laughs> Sister Bertha, the mirror... Why, Mother, I look beautiful. Don't be vain, my daughter. Let me say it for you. You are indeed beautiful, my dear.
children, Liesel, Friedrich, Gretel, Brigitte, Marta, see Kaltzberg Festival, 1938. And look, here are your names. Liesel, Friedrich, Louisa, Kurt, Brigitte, Marta, and Gretel. Why am I always last? Well, because you're the youngest. Now, Friedrich, I'm depending on you and Liesel. Day after tomorrow, you must all be ready at 11 o'clock. That's when... Hey, Father, can you help me, please? The goal lighter is here. He wants to know why we aren't flying the new flag. Heil! I tried to explain... Keep quiet! When is Captain Von Trapp returning? Uh, who knows? When a man is on his honeymoon, These are not see? times for joking. It's been four days since the Anschluss. This is the only house in the province that is not flying the flag of the Third Reich. You mean the flag with the black spider? Brigitte! You allow such remarks in this house? Who are you? I am Maximilian Detweiler, first secretary of the Ministry of Education and Culture. That was in the old regime. In the old regime, I was third secretary. Now I am first secretary. Good. Then you order them to fly the flag. But Captain Von Trapp would it. I mean, I can only take my orders from Captain Von Trapp. You will take your orders from us, and so will the captain. Heil! Hi. Why was he so cross? Everybody's cross these days. Is Father going to be in trouble? He doesn't have to be. The thing to do today is to get along with everybody. Now, I'm depending on you. Get everyone on the bus at 11 o'clock. Uncle Max, are you sure this is going to be all right with Father? Well, of course. He'll be pleased and proud. Liesel, do you think so? Brigitte, don't you trust me? No. <laughs> well, anyway, the bus leaves at 11 o'clock. Roll line, Liesel. See what I have here? That's Father's luggage. Yes, they're back. <laughs> now, Liesel, they'll have such an awful lot to tell us. Let's not hurry about telling them anything. We didn't expect you back until next week. Max, it's good you're here. We came as soon as we heard. There's much I want to know. Children, we miss you so very much. What did you miss most? We miss all that noise you make in the morning. Oh, that noise you make? Telling each other to be quiet. We must come to the stairs and say good night to you. We must hear you sing. You came back just in time to hear us sing. Father, we're going to be singing in the Kaltzberg Festival on Friday night. Let me see that. <laughs> Max? Are you responsible for this? I, I've just been waiting to tell you about it, Gail. You can't talk your way out of this one. Presents! Oh, I want them! I don't Now, Gail, I had to make a last minute decision. I was lucky to be able to answer them at all. They'll be the talk of the festival. Seven children in one family. Not my family. But the committee heard them. They were enchanted. Well, really, Max? What did they say? Oh, you never heard such praise. Oh, Gail, did you hear? The Von Trapp family does not sing in public. But if they make people happy... And for the festival, people come from all over the world. It is out of the question. Georg, it's for Austria. There is no Austria. But the Anschluss happened peacefully. Let's at least be grateful for that. Grateful! To these swine... Maria, you must talk to it. I admire the way he feels, but you have to convince him. He must compromise. No, Max, no. Maria, you must. Max, I can't ask Georg to be less than what he is. Then I will talk to him. If these children don't sing in the festival, well, it would be a reflection on Austria. I know. Wouldn't do me any good either. <laughs> Mother, I like calling you that. I've always known that you loved us children. Now I knew that you love Father. I do, Liesel. I love him very much. How can you be sure? Because I don't think first of myself anymore. I think first of him. I know now how to spend my love. 
Well, you stay with Liesel. I'll take it to him. I'm under orders to make sure the captain gets it. I think you can trust me to give it to him. I have my orders. It's silly, they're married. Oh, Franz, this telegram is to be delivered in the hands of Captain Von Trapp. Ha! Ha! Rob? Even Franz? Yes, even Franz. Even me. Even everybody in Nonburg except for the great Captain Von Trapp. If he knows what's good for him, he'll come over to the right side. And if he doesn't, he better get out of the country. Well, don't talk like that. There are things that happen today to a man like that. He'd better get out quick. Cry all you want. Just remember what I said before. It's too late. And you remember too. Liesl, don't cry. How could he turn on father that way? Maybe he wasn't threatening your father. Maybe he was just warning him. Liesl. What is it, Georg? I didn't think I had to face a decision this soon. Berlin has offered me a commission in their navy. Well, Georg. I can't just brush this aside. I admit, it would be exciting to have a ship under me again. Well. What I mean is, it would be good to know that you and the children are taken care of. But it also means that... Please, Maria. Help me. Georg, whatever you decide will be my decision too. Thank you. I know I could never do it. Of course not. We'll have to get out of Austria right away. We'll have to leave tonight. Now. Not without my family. Besides, we can't just pick up and go. No, they'll be watching us now. We have to plan. We have to have time. Heil! Sir, Admiral von Schrager of the Navy of the Third Reich is here to see you. Thank you, Franz. <laughs> they didn't give us time. Then we'll have to make time. I'll show them in. We must be careful. Stormtroopers? Maria, I was afraid this would happen. 
Max, you stay with Georg. I need the children. Liesel, quickly, find the children. Quickly. This way, Amaral. We can talk in here. Amaral von Schreiber, may I present Herr Detweiler? Max, I believe you know Herr Zeller. Would you gentlemen care to sit down? We are here on business. Captain von Trapp, a telegram was sent to you three days ago. Yes, I've just received it. I've been away. I've only been home a half an hour. The Captain von Trapp was on his honeymoon trip, sir. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you, sir. Your record in the war is very well remembered by us, Captain. It's good to hear you say that, sir. Let's get to the point, if you don't mind. In our Navy, we hold you at very high regard. That explains why I'm here. Having had no answer to our telegram, the High Command has sent me in person. Well, that's very flattering, Admiral. But I've had no time to consider... I'm here to present you with your commission. I am deeply conscious of the honor, sir. And your orders are to report immediately to the naval base in Bremerhaven. Immediately? Oh, I'm afraid that would be impossible for you, Georg. Admiral von Schreiber, may I present my wife, the Baroness von Trapp. Madame. What I meant, sir, is that we are all singing in the Kalsberg Festival Friday night. You see, the von Trapp family singers, right here in the program. It's been arranged by the Ministry of Education and Culture, sir. Friday night? It's Wednesday. That's only a matter of two days. It might be possible. Admiral, and you could report to Bremerhaven on Monday. Is there a telephone I could use? Yes, right this way, Admiral. Perhaps if there is another question, the added weight of my voice might be able to help. It gives here only the names of the children. It says the Von Trapp family singers. I am head of the Von Trapp family, am I not? It's hard to believe, Captain Von Trapp. You, singing in a concert? Herr Zeller, you may believe what you choose. Like yourself, I am a man of hidden talent. It doesn't say here what you're going to sing. What are you going to sing, Captain? It is your privilege to come to the concert and hear us. But I'd like to hear you sing now. Sing what you're going to sing in a concert. Sing. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Liesl, will you give us a do? Do, a, dear, a, female, dear. Re, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself. Far, a long, long way to run.
Anita Pauline Pena, Anna Tupana Sadi, I drink with John and Brad, drink with John and seeing you again, perhaps for a very long time. I would like to sing for you a love song. I know that you share this love. I pray that you never let it die. Gentlemen, thank you. In just a moment, I have an announcement that concerns you. 
The festival concert has come to its conclusion. Except, of course, we don't know what that conclusion is going to be yet. Right now, the judges are putting their heads together to arrive at their decision. And while we are waiting, I think there should be an encore. It seems that this may be the last opportunity for the family von Trapp to sing together for a long, long time. I have just been informed that the Captain von Trapp leaves immediately from this concert to his new command and the naval forces of the Third Reich. A guard of honor is waiting outside this hall to escort him directly to the naval base at Bremerhaven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the family von Trapp again. from the clock in the hall and the bells in the steeple too and up in the nursery an absurd little bird is popping out to say cuckoo cuckoo regretful us, but firmly they compel us to say goodbye to you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I have here the decision of our distinguished judges. We will start with the third award. For this honor, the judges have selected the trio of the Sangobund of Herwegen. Second prize goes to Fraulein Schweiger, first soloist of the choir of St. Anthony's Church in Rabat. Congratulations. And now for the first prize. The highest musical honor in the Ostmark goes to the Family Von Trapp. <laughs> the Family Von Trapp.
Don't just stand there, play something. to search. It shouldn't be long now. How many of them are there? I counted only eight stormtroopers and their officer. Sister Margareta, we didn't intend to put the Abbey in this much danger. It's outrageous. The church has always been a sanctuary. Not with these people. This is the third time they've searched the Abbey. Look there! That's why we put you out here in the garden. They always search the inside, but never the outside. Is this God's house? Shh! Yes, darling. Would it help if we sung about our favorite things? No, darling, it would not help. We must all be very, very quiet. We'll let you know when they've gone. After they've gone, can we go home? No, darling. We have a long drive ahead of us. Liesel, let's all stay together. They've gone. Reverend Mother, we are truly sorry for the Abbey in this much danger. Reverend Mother, we can never thank you. As soon as it's safe, we'll start. We've hidden our car deep in the woods. The car will do you no good. They've left a guard in the road. I've been listening to the wireless. All the roads are blocked. The border's been closed. I used to think of these mountains as my friends. Standing there, protecting me. Now it seems they become my enemies. Never your enemies. Haven't you read? For I will lift up mine eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help. Georg, I know that mountain as well as I know this garden. And so do you. And once we're over that mountain, we're in Switzerland. But the children! We can help them. Father, we can do it without help. You'll have help. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Follow every rainbow Till you find your dream A dream that will mean All the love you can get Every day of your life For as long as you live Oh, 
like to thank all of those who have made this show possible. Martha Deppenbrock, who has sewn her fingers to the bone, and her loyal band of seamstresses who have done the costume so authentically. The orchestra, under the direction of Greg Saramelli. Brian Schulte and Tom Bricking, assisted by Joe Fisher. Producers, Lindy Blankenbuehler and Nicole Nelson. Vocal director, Renee Harris.
written by Mrs. Schumacher. Um, it's a poem called Lessons of Life. <laughs> you taught us to take each phase of life one step at a time, to learn from each achievement, each mistake. You guided the capabilities that we weren't even aware that we had. You saw our strengths, camouflaged in youth's tenderness. You always expected our best, but never asked for more than we had to give. <laughs> you coached our minds, our bodies, and our hearts, and then watched as we faced the challenges ahead. <laughs> you shared in our successes and disappointments, but never let us become lost in them. You gave us confidence, yet made us humble. The power of God's love that we see in you are qualities that become a part of each of us, too. Thanks. <laughs> when we leave, we will always remember you and how you have enriched our lives. A teacher, a guide, a friend, a very special person. Thank you, Mrs. Halpin, Mrs. Nelson, Mrs. Blankenbuehler, Mr. Saramelli, Mrs. Harris, and Mrs. Bricking for what we have accomplished together. Try to hurry. I know you have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> you have to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. It's a charm bracelet. It's oh. The past four plays that she's done, it represents everybody in the casting. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Mother Goose with 163 children. We've been together working on this play since the first week in December and it's been a long haul. We've put in a lot of long late hours and it's been tough to come to school some mornings. But this is probably the largest cast that I've ever worked with and one of the most respectful and talented ensembles that I've had the pleasure to direct. And I owe a lot to a lot of people. And I would ask you, you've been such a gracious audience, if you would just indulge me for a minute so that I can mention these people. They've already been named. Uh, Brian Schulte, who is an alum from CovCat, who came back and designed the set for us this year. Brian, thank you so much. My husband. <laughs> My husband, Tom, who has been doing plays with me since 1968, and he has put up with set building for many, many years, and I owe him a lot. I also would like to thank Joe Fisher, who has been really helpful in building the set. I don't know if Joe's here tonight, but Julie, Tell your dad thanks. He was great. He made the bed, and he made beds for the masses here. <laughs> I owe a lot of thanks to Denise Chickie, to Kevin Sketch, and to Eric Black. <laughs> Eric and Kevin are also CovCath alums who've done plays here. I owe a debt of gratitude also to Rick Harris, Renee Harris's husband. Renee's the vocal coach, and Rick works tirelessly behind the scenes, getting all the sound set up for us, and sometimes it's a nightmare. And I just want to say thank you, Rick. I do appreciate all the long hours, all the Sundays you've spent here. Especially... <laughs> I would especially like to thank Greg Ceramelli, 
Nikki Nelson, Lindy Blankenbuehler, Kelly Halpin, Renee Harris, Martha Deppenbrock, who has sewn so many costumes, repaired things. We've ripped so many things out, lost things. <laughs> she helped us fix hair. She's been great. These are the kinds of people that make this show possible. And also, I feel like I should mention um, Skeffington's in Florence, who loaned us all these tuxes about three weeks ago. Actually, they didn't charge us a thing, so if you have to get a tux for a prom, go to Skeffington's. <laughs> That's a little commercial. And also to Phil Keller, who is our maintenance man here. He's sort of the maintenance engineer, jack of all trades. He built the gate for us. He hung lights backstage for us. He's been wonderful. And I can't say enough about our administration here. Um, four women who I think have made this play possible and have helped me keep my sanity. Sister Rita, Sister Rachel, Sister Elaine, and Sister Paul Ann. Thank you so much. Mr. Franks and Mrs. Anderson, who have held the troops down downstairs, thank you. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the seniors. Some of these kids have been in place before. I think Sarah Anderson is our veteran. She's been in place here for four years. She's Alpha. places. <laughs> um, I would like to present all of the seniors with a certificate of achievement for drama. So as I call your name, seniors, if you would please come up. Katie Chase. <laughs> Maria Giordulo. Kathleen Crowley. <laughs> Jennifer Flesh. <laughs> Sarah Detzel. <laughs> Nicole Doozy. Katie Hellman. James Myers. Yep. Jim has also been with us for four years. Seven years. He was here before we even knew he was here. Sarah Anderson. Evan Brass. Dan Shoemaker. Rebecca Brock. <laughs> Beth Lorenz. <laughs> Liz Kirkwood. <laughs> Matt Shepard. Marissa Montel. Amy Clyer. Megan Bush. Angie Muther.
Scott Fishhesser. Thank you, Scott. Christine Segrist. Christine. Katie Schnell. Mary Reeder. <laughs> Katie Tapke. <laughs> Katie Rath. <laughs> Lauren Mayberry. And last but not least, those two people who said that they really were just slaves. They really weren't. They were student directors. Carla Snowden and Pete Shively. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Okay. All right. I have to write some more certificates out, obviously. Jessica Quast, Paul. Stand up here with me. I thought I had them all, but I don't. Katie Moser. Katie, come on up here. And Paul Rui. Brian Henley. Okay. Mike Young. Who else did I forget? Chris Chris Kumler. To check my sources the next time. Before we officially close the play, I'd like to make just a presentation. Um, as you know, this is our 10th anniversary for the uh, combined Notre Dame Academy and Clemens and Catholic school plays. And really, this would never have happened if it wasn't for the vision and interest of Lyndon Bricking. And so, we have a um, a plaque for you to put on your wall. <laughs> and it, I'd like to read it to you if I could. It says, Director of the Decade, 1989 to 1998, presented to Linda Bricking, in gratitude for your unwavering standard of excellence. Our gratitude for your untiring work effort is only matched by our appreciation for your leadership and inspiration. 1989, The Hobbit. 1990, Up the Down Staircase. 1991, Flowers for Algernon. 1992, Godspell. 1993, To Kill a Mockingbird. 1994, West Side Story. 1995, MASH. 1996, Fiddler on the Roof. 1997, Our Town. 1998, The Sound of Music. <laughs> And the last line says, you keep our hopes set high. So, oh. I'm funny in this court. Okay. Oh my gosh. Also, <laughs> um, can't even no. stand on the wooden stage. <laughs> There's a saying that goes, an old saying that, that goes, behind every great man is a woman telling him what to do. I might offend people, but <laughs> <laughs> what I'm here to tell you tonight is that behind great woman is a man who has been so supportive of her, and Tom and Linda Bricking really are just a, a great example of married love and partnership in our day. And so what we have for Tom tonight is a little tro trophy, it's the Supporting Husband Award, <laughs> presented to Tom Bricking for set design and construction, 
their NDA and CCH school plays. Thank you both so much. <laughs>